Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and we're on week 13 of the Dear Jane Quilt Along that I'm doing in 2024, and I'm happy to hear that a lot of you are following along, um, whether you're using EQ8 or just the book. But um, we've got a beautiful quilt started here, and we're going to be on our last block of the top row, which kind of means we're almost a quarter of the way through this. So, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and you can quilt along with us or just watch how this journey goes. Join in on the fun we've got at this channel. Um, also, I am going to spend a few minutes here at the beginning doing EQ8 and some of the blocks. If you're not using EQ8, I have time codes for the construction of the blocks in the description below this video. So you can jump ahead to the blocks. So, this week, I am using brown batiks. Here's my brown batiks. These are the batiks I'm using this week and my blocks. So I've kind of colored them over here on the left with the um, colors, trying to match the colors that I've got in my uh, batiks. But um, we are going to be doing A4 Courtney stethoscope. So let's start populating my color quilt here. So let's go to A4 and put it in. Then we're doing, I am doing B5 Hot Cross Buns Variation 2, and I'll tell you why about that when we get to the block work table. And that is B5. And then we've got C8 Hanny's Crown goes there. Next is J10 Chico's Calla Lily Variation 1. And again, I'll tell you why I'm using the variation when we get to the block work table. And that is J10. We sure have a lot of the bottom of this quilt filled in. And then we have TR13 Eiffel Tower. So look at that top row. Woo wee, that is pretty. All right, so let's head over to the block work table and um, see what I'm doing and maybe give you some ideas. Um, for what you want to do if you want to use the variations or not but I'll show you why I'm using them so let's head to the block work table all right here is our first block this is a4 Courtney stethoscope there is nothing special about this block I am going to be um, foundation paper piecing this one and you can see here that the found the sections are pretty straightforward we've got basically three sections in the center and then the corners and then the borders on the outside. So I'm going to be foundation paper piecing this one. All right, next is B5 Hot Cross Buns Variation 2. And you can see that there's seams inside of here. And that's because I want to foundation paper piece these. But if you go look at the others, um, either just the center block or the variation one. I do believe those are applique. So let's look at those real quick. Here's B5 right here. Yes, the, it's pieced in the background and then applique if you want to do it that way. And then let's see, variation one is, let's see what that looks like. That is pieced and I don't want to piece it like that at all so I'm, I don't even want to consider this one um, so that's why I'm going to be doing my b5 variation 2 because I can easily foundation paper pieces each of these corners is its own section uh, makes it real easy to put together so that's how I'm doing my b5 okay Hanny's crown is uh it's none of the variations. I don't even know if they have variations for this, um, but this one is pretty fat, uh, pretty easy to put together with the foundation paper piecing. We've got the center is just a section, each corner is its own section, and then we surround it with all the other corners to round out the block. So I don't foresee that being too hard. All right, J10, I think it's Chico's Calla Lily, and I'm doing variation one, which is right here. This is all applique. The other one is all pieced. So you're going to have to piece all these petals and these center pieces. I don't even want to go there. This is a this is a four and a half inch block, and those little seams are going to be just a nightmare for me. So I'm going to applique this one. 
But what I did with this one is I don't want to applique this center block right here, the center square. So I went in and pieced, made a pieced background for this. And I've got that in here. So right here is the pieced background I did. I found out how big the center square was and then I just drew in the lines around it. Um, so I have a strip here and two strips on the side of my center and then the bottom strip. So that's what I did is just piece this. Then I could rotary, I could print out a rotary. Um, that's templates, I want rotary cutting. And I could do that. I could build it from the rotary cutting. So that's what I did. I built this background and then I'm going to applique on top of this instead of having two sets of applique here in the center. All right, last block. This is our TR13, top row number 13. This is a combination of foundation paper piecing and applique. So foundation paper piecing is basically by row here and that's not gonna be too hard. And so then we need to go over and print our templates for the applique. And this T and S is all we need for applique so we can delete all these other pieces and just print out our T and S and be ready to put it together. So there you go. Not too hard this week. Um, that's how I'm doing my blocks. There are other variations if you wanna do them a different way, but I just wanted to show you how I'm doing them. And I also wanted to show you how I built the background to the uh, J10 Chico's Calla Lily in case you wanna do the same thing and not have as much applique in the center of it. All right, there we go. Let's get started on our box this week. This is gonna be fun. All right, to get started on A4, Courtney's stethoscope. This is what we're going for. That's what the block's gonna look like. My pieces here are the white squares are right here in these pieces. The white triangles are all the white triangles you see. These long rectangles are the outer border. These short rectangles are what's inside the um, center of the block. And then these large squares are these large pieces out here. So this is pretty easy, except um, it's pretty easy in the sense that these are just put together one right after the other. I'm not gonna do those. I'll do this piece right here, the A section. All right, to get started on the A section, I've gone ahead and drawn out my seams here and the edge of the paper follows the seam allowance. So our first piece is right here. It's gonna be white and it's gonna be a triangle. Then we're gonna have a brown rectangle and then another white triangle and then another brown rectangle. And then we're gonna put our square on over here, our brown square. So let's get our white triangle. And this is our first piece. And so my triangle needs to be oriented this way. And this is probably about a quarter of an inch right here, so I'm just going to line my edge up with that line right there. Make sure I've got, and I do, I have plenty of fabric out here and I'm coming off the paper, so I've got plenty of room here. Same with this piece. This is going to be what's in here and we don't need a very big piece, so I'm just going to kind of center it so it's hanging off the paper. And then we need to sew from here to here and lock stitch at these points. All right, here's my first two pieces. I have gone ahead and trimmed between A2 and A3, my quarter of an inch. My next piece is gonna be this white triangle and it needs to be oriented like that. So I'm just gonna flip it over line it up, make sure I have at least a quarter of an inch coverage over here with this line. So now we're gonna sew on this line between A2 and A3 and lock stitch at each end. All right, there's my first three pieces. I've gone ahead and trimmed along my A4 line, so I have a quarter of an inch. My A4 is a brown rectangle and I'm going to line it up basically so it's coming off the paper here. And that gives me plenty of room over here so we can now sew between 
the pieces we just put on an A4 lock stitch here and come out to there. All right, here's my first four pieces. Now we have to put on our last big A5 piece, which is gonna be my dark piece. I have trimmed my quarter of an inch along that line. And now I've got this big square that'll fit here nicely. So I've got it so my corners are off the paper. I'm going to sew on this line in between the pieces I just put on and we'll be done with our section. There's that section put together. I will trim it when I get all of these done, but I also wanna let you know that these pieces that are just, these sections that are just single sections, I've gone ahead and just sewn my fabrics in the seam allowances there, and then I'm going to trim them out so then I can use them as paper pieces later. So there are three of those in this piece. So well, that's what I've done and I will get these trimmed out when I get this one trimmed out. But I'm going to finish all these up and we'll be ready to go. Here's all my sections finished. I have it laid out. So we've got three sections here in the middle. So we need to put this one, which is my A and my F together. And we can, that's where we're going to start. I have notches that I have in my templates or my sections that I cut out. So these notches will line up right here with the fabric. So we wanna sew on this line and I think I'll iron my seams open. And then we'll have a straight line just like this one over here. And then I'm just gonna attach this one along that edge. Here's my center section put together and I ended up ironing this piece towards this outer piece. Um, there's just no seams there. It made it a little easier. So now we need to put on our triangles to complete the center square. And again, I have notches that are just going to line up right here on the edge of the fabric. So sew on the line and let's iron towards this piece. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to add this one on just like this one. There's my center completed. All we have left to do is add our edges. So these will fit here and I'm gonna get these put on, iron towards the strip, and then I'll add these and iron towards the strip. A4 Courtney's stethoscope is done. That turned out really pretty in my batiks. That's what it's supposed to look like and that's what it looks like. Always good when your block looks like the one that it's supposed to look like, right? All right, next up is B5 Hot Cross Buns and I am doing variation two which is all foundation paper piecing. So that's what I'm doing. This one should be pretty easy to put together. Um, I've got my long rectangles that are all these white strips here, and I am just gonna attach these like I did last time and then trim them out of my paper. And then these little rectangles are gonna be here. My squares are the inside of these. And then all of these are the same. I've got 16 of them. They're gonna be what wraps around my square in the middle. So let me put one of these right here. Let's put the A section together. All right, there it is drawn out. We're gonna start right here with, um, I'll show you from the other side. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna start in here with the um, brown rectangle. You wanna take one. I'm gonna lay it over number two, which is the center diamond. About a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna take my square. I'm gonna bring it about a quarter of an inch past this line right here and we still have coverage. Should work, let me check it out. All right, there's my first two pieces. Um, you can see I have about a quarter of an inch past this line down here, and then when we flip it over, we still have coverage up here. Actually, it's right here, sorry. That's where we need the coverage, so we have plenty of coverage. All right, let me get it trimmed up. Between two and three. Now we're just gonna be wrapping around that white piece with our brown rectangle, my brown rectangle. So I'm just gonna kind of center it 
make sure that I'm off the paper here so that when I flip it, I'll still have coverage out to my seam allowance. And then we'll sew on the line between A2 and A3, lock stitching at each point. All right, my first three pieces are on. I have trimmed between those pieces and my A4, a quarter of an inch. We need another one of my brown rectangles. And my seam allowance is right here, so I've got plenty of room with my piece of fabric. So we will sew from here, this point, lock stitch out to there. We got like a little wonky log cabin going on or something here. So I have got my all my pieces on. I've trimmed my quarter of an inch at, um, before piece five. I'm gonna grab another rectangle. Lay it down. I am off the paper over here, so I'm good. I've got plenty of coverage here at this line. So, so between all your other pieces and A5, lock stitching there and sewing out there. Here we go. First five pieces. I have trimmed for my piece six, which is gonna be one of these shorter rectangles. I'm gonna line it up. So it basically for me is going edge of, edge to edge on my paper, so I have plenty of room for my seam allowance there. So, so on this line, and uh, I'm gonna finish up all my other sections because they're exactly the same as this one. And then um, get my long pieces attached to these papers and we'll be ready to put the block together. I've got all my pieces cut out. And if you look at the block, all our points on our diamonds need to be pointing towards the center. So that's how I've laid my blocks out. So what I need to do now is just sew these together. And I am going to iron towards the, you know, to iron away from this white center section here on both of these blocks. And then we can finish um, assembling the entire block. There's my pieces sewn together. I actually ironed towards the white strip here, sorry. Now we need to put our center pieces together with this strip here. And I'm gonna to iron towards the white strip. And then we'll put our um, top strip on and then we'll just start moving around. I'm actually going to the left. These are all different sizes. So this is the shortest. These two are the same size. And then this is the longest. So that's how we're gonna, I'm gonna go around. So. There we go. I think what I'll do is iron towards all these white strips. And there we go. Hot cross buns is done. Let me know if you did paper piecing or if you did applique. Um, piecing, paper piecing really wasn't that hard and I like the way it turned out. Next up is C8 Hanny's Crown. That's what it's gonna look like. Shouldn't be too hard to put together. Um, one change I am going to make is I'm gonna make this my A1 and then just change my A1 to my A2. So I'm gonna start in the center and then I'm just gonna go around. And then these four pieces are exactly the same. So let's put together one of these little pieces. This is pretty easy. Um, so let's put one, together one of these little pieces here. So my pieces are this white square goes here. These white rectangles are actually these triangles on the outside. These brown rectangles are the triangles on the inside. These triangles are out here and these rectangles are out here and I'm just gonna attach those like I have been um, and then trim around them. So let's get do one of these little pieces. Here is the little piece I'm gonna demonstrate. Whoops, it's little. I've drawn the two seams I'm gonna have. These are the outside corners. I've got a, in my case, a brown in the middle for the first piece, and then my second piece is white, and my third piece is white. These are the pieces I need for, to complete this section. <clears throat> All right, our first piece is my brown. So I'm gonna take it, cover it, so that I have a quarter of an inch over the seam between one and two right here. These are my edges, so I've got plenty of room here. 
Then I'm going to take my white piece, but I'm going to orient it so that the longer edge goes this way. And I want to lay it down. There's my seam allowance, so I have enough to work with here, and that way the long piece comes out that way and we'll have plenty of coverage. So we want to sew between D1 and D2. There's my first two pieces. I have trimmed between D1 and D3, my quarter of an inch. So I'm going to come over here. Again, I'm going to orient it so that the longer edge is going to be flipping this way. There's my seam allowance. Here's my fabric. It comes on the outside, so we are looking good. We're going to sew on the line between D1 and D3. All right, there's the piece I did. Plenty of coverage all the way around. I've taken all of my singular sections and I have sewn the paper onto my pieces and then I'm going to trim those out. So I've got two triangles and then these two corner units. And I'm going to finish these out. And um, like I said, I'm going to change the square and a square to start in the middle and then just move to my second piece out. And then you're just going around the edge there. So I'm going to get all this finished up and we'll put our block together. There we go. There's all our sections done. Pieces are ready to get sewn together. I've got my center here and then my four triangles around it. These are going to just fit on each edge. Um, I'm going to sew these and I think I'll iron towards the triangle. And then we'll end up with this square. And then we've got to add these two smaller corner pieces on. We'll just line up along these straight edges. And I'm going to iron towards these pieces. And then finally, we can put these two pieces on and I'll iron towards these triangles. Pretty simple to put together. Canny's crown is finished. That wasn't too hard to put together. That's a pretty block. I am kind of a busy fabric, but hey, I'm going with it. Our last center block today is J10 Chaco's Calla Lily. And this one is mostly applique. I chose variation one, which is mostly applique. It is not curved piecing. I did change it though. I made my own modification, which I probably showed you in the EQ8 part was I didn't want to have one big white piece and then a brown piece in the middle and then more white applique on top of it. Um, I'd have a couple appliques sitting there. So what I did was I went into EQ8 and just designed a block that I could put together um, that looks exactly like the um, background of this one that's pieced. So I'm going to be piecing my blocks and I should have showed you how to do that in the EQ8 section. So basically, we're making three rows here. I am going to put these um, three pieces together. I'll iron them open, then I'll add these two pieces, and then I'll have my background. And at that time, I'll have all my pieces cut out. And um, we put our white pieces in the middle, and we put our brown pieces around the edge to make these flower um, patterns. I've got my back piece together, and I've started putting my petals down. And all I did for the center was put the corner of my petal here and brought it down so it's basically in line with this and then after that just started laying my petals down so that their corners landed in the the corner of the petal landed in the corner of this brown spot so now the brown center not spot now i am lining up my corners of my brown pieces and the corner with the um, outside of the block, and then I want to make sure that I have a quarter of an inch left also. That's the seam allowance out here. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it at the moment, and hopefully when I get all done, it will look good. So now I've got to do the petals out here. Let's see what those are going to be like. So 
So I'm just kind of lining up my point there and then running my edges right there next to my other two pieces. Hopefully that will be enough to have it look like the picture. Now we have to see if it fits here. All right, lines up good enough there for me. So I'm just going to keep working my way around. There we go, what do you think? I think it's good. It works for me. Um, let me know how you did it. Let me know if you uh, came up with any kind of scientific calculation to lay these uh, petals out or if you just eyeballed it too. You know what? I'm pinning this on, but I gotta take it over and iron it down. But anyway, that's what it looks like. Not too hard, and uh, it's a pretty block. Okay, we're on to the last border block in the top row called Eiffel Tower. It's TR13. I've got a lot of cut pieces, and if you're following me, you know that I have my cut pieces on my website. Link's in the description down below. So I'm not going to go through these. There's a lot here. I do have them listed out, what sizes they are, and where they go. So... I think I'll put together this one because these are just three pieces. I think they're pretty easy. So I'll put this one together. And then we do have two appliques. These two curved pieces here are appliques, and I've got those ready to go. So let's get started. Here's the piece we're going to work on. I've drawn it out on the back. So our first piece is here in the center. Then our second and third piece are the dark color triangles, and then the fourth and fifth piece are on the outside here. So I'm going to take, these are the pieces I need. I'm going to take my square, I'm going to line it up here so that I pretty much have a quarter of an inch all the way around. Take my triangle, which needs to be oriented like this, flip it over. I'm going to line up this right angle on my triangle with my white square. And then we'll sew in between D1 and D2, lock stitching at intersections. Here's my first two pieces. I'm going to turn it over. We're going to trim between D1 and D3 now. And I pretty much just need to trim the tail off the brown piece. We need our next brown triangle needs to be oriented like that so we'll flip it over again I'm going to line up the right angle of my triangle with my white fabric and sew between d1 and d3 lock stitching at intersections first three pieces put on let's go to our fourth we need to trim it not much trimming I'm not even going to trim actually we need to take our rectangles and they need to be oriented with the long edge this way. So I'm just going to make sure that my edges come are outside of these lines and they are. Could actually probably just move a little bit that way. And we're going to sew on the line now between D1, D3, and D4, and I'm going to put on D5 exactly the same as D4. That's probably the most complicated piece we have to put together, our section, so I'm going to finish these out. We can put it together and add our applique. 
All right, so I actually want to show you what I'm, how I'm doing this big piece. I've got a rectangle for my center brown piece, which is the first piece. I'm going to go over here to the line between E1 and E2, and I'm going to fold it before I put my second piece on, and I'm going to cut it. All right, so now I can take my big rectangles, lay them in there, and sew on this line. So that's how we get started on this, and then the um, E3 is gonna go on just like any other paper piecing. Got my pieces done, got them trimmed, and now we just build them from largest to smallest up to the top here. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna put these together, either line up points, or line up my edges here with the notches and get them sewn. I think I'll iron all these open and then we'll come back and put on our applique. There's my Eiffel Tower. It is time to put our applique on and my brown applique is gonna fit in there and my white applique is gonna fit there. So that's how I'm putting them on. That's where they go. And this was not a very challenging block at all. What did you think? It's going to be pretty. There we go. There's the first one. There's the second one. Just need to get those ironed down and our block will be done. Woo! All right, there we go. Our blocks are done. I like how they turned out. Let me know again how you did yours. Um, I love hearing from you. I love when you tag your blocks and I can look at them and share them. Um, it makes for a lot of fun. So I am now at the part where I populate my quilt with my photos. So I pulled up one of my photos and I do have a video on how to straighten and crop and resize them, which I have linked down below, but um, I was kind of playing around today. And up here in the top left right here, they have some other things that you can play with. So you can come here to color and you can play with these. I did color balance. Let's just move me over here. I'll get out of the way. So it shows you, there's a part here that says, you can click that says auto adjust and it shows you what it looks like now. And then it shows you what it looks like after if you do that. So it kind of brightens my block up. I like the way that looks. All right, there we go. Let's add it to the sketchbook. All right, so it changed it for me. I like the way that looks better, especially when it's so small inside of the quilt that I'm um, populating it into. We have a histogram. Um, not real sure what this is, but um, you can play with your brightness and contrast here. The other two seem to be grayed out. No, they aren't grayed out. Anyway, that's a little beyond what I can do. Um, so I'm not going to use that. Then we do have special effects. You can put different effects on it. You can make it artistic, pixelate, noise. Um, I don't know why you would want to do that, especially with Dear Jane. We do have filters uh, if you want to use those. I don't know what this is. Some kind of symmetry. I'm not going to play with that. And square symmetry. So you can play around with these things, see if they work for you, or if you're working in EQ8 and other places, these are available to you. But anyway, let's head over to my quilt work table, my photo quilt work table, and let's populate my quilt. All right, I'm over at my photo quilt, so I'm going to start populating, and the last five blocks here are my photos, so... Let's see, let's start with the first one, which is A4. That's down here. And then we've got B5 right here. And C8. And J10. 
And then TR13, look at that top row, it's done. Ooh, look at that, that is exciting. It's so exciting to see the blocks I made actually in here. Um, it is so much fun. So hit the subscribe button, notification bell if you want to follow along. Let me know what you think of how I did the blocks. Share your blocks on social media with hashtag DearJaneQAL and tag me and I'll find them and share them. But thanks so much for following along. Thanks for watching the video and I will see you in the next video. Bye.